Uh, we're here at the end. So let's talk about the beginning. Uh, the beginning of any journey is just that. It's the beginning. That's all it is. Sometimes it goes smoothly and your hope sort of rises for all of the potential to actualize all the things that you were thinking you were going to do on this journey. And sometimes it doesn't go so smoothly and the dread and the foreboding kind of mounts. Sometimes it doesn't go so smoothly, but things work out. My girlfriend in college uh, was living in New York City. And I was going to school in Memphis, having uh, grown up in a little suburb outside of Atlanta, uh, a railroad town called Tucker, Tucker, Georgia. And I wanted to go see my girlfriend. I wanted to go see her in New York City. I wanted to go there for the first time and uh, see what was going on and try to impress upon her that I was still uh, worth something. I, I got on the phone with my dad and I told him I wanted to go see my girlfriend and he said, you know, your grandfather and your great-grandmother, Bobo placed it. Uh, they, they lived in New York City. And I said, hmm, yeah, I, I think I knew that. And I, uh, he said, just, just don't call any attention to yourself. You know, don't look up and uh, don't open any maps in the middle of the street. And I said, all right. And uh, so I had to go and tell my professor that I wasn't gonna be there. And, and so I did that and he said, New York City, Whoa. Uh, you know, just try to blend in, you know, and uh, don't make eye contact with anybody. And I said, guys, come on, I played, I played sports in high school, you know, like, I'm 6'3". It's going to be okay, you know. And so I got on the airplane, and, and, uh, and there she was to greet me. There she was. And it was amazing. I mean, she looked like this woman I used to know that now lived in New York City, she looked like that. She had all this, she had all this blue smock and it had like kind of painted green swirls all over it. It was funky, you know, and I was like, wow, you know, it kind of looks like that woman that I, that I date. And I, and I, we started to move toward each other and it was brilliant. It was just great. It was so perfect, you know, and everything was going so well. And, and she looked at me and she said, are you ready to go? I said, yeah, let's go. And so we, we went down to the taxi stand and, and we stood there and we got a taxi and we got the taxi. And I mean, this individual took off. I mean, like breakneck speed, all eight cylinders working hard, coming out of LaGuardia Airport. And sooner or later, I mean, very sooner, we were on the, you know, we were careening down the streets in Manhattan. And I mean, the people, the people were everywhere. Right? And there, was, there were cars, and there were, and there were taxis, and there were buildings, and they just shot up from the sidewalk, and there were more people, and more cars, and vendors, and street signs, and there was so much stimuli. I, I just, it was unbelievable to me. We, we came to a stop at a, at, a, at a light, and I promise, I saw the people crossing in front of us in the crosswalk veer as if they were going to come toward our taxi. You know, and I, and I kind of crouched down, and I, I thought I crossed a little, but I actually ended up all the way down in the floorboards behind the back seat. And my girlfriend looked down at me, and she said, it's okay, you know, let's come put our bottom back on the seat. You know, that's what I did. It was cool. And uh, sat there, and we made it to her apartment. And here I was. I was standing in this studio apartment in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And it was like an apartment should be, right? There was a there was a bathroom, and there was a kitchen, and there was a place to sit, and everything uh, was cool. There was a window, but there were you know there were bars, there were bars on the outside of the window, and you know I'd see bars on the outside of the window, you know Memphis and stuff. <laughs> and uh, but there were bars on the there were bars on the inside of the window. I never seen that. I didn't like that. <laughs> I uh, kept wandering over there, kept kind of wandering over there to the window, and I, I kept kind of looking at the mechanism, and it's like this kind of like accordion thing, you know. And, do you know, uh, have you ever, how do you open this thing? You know, it's, it's got a key right there, you see there's a key hole? I said, yeah. Have you ever, you know, have you ever opened it? And she said, no, never opened it. Yeah. Here you go. 
ever would? No. Why would you ever open this? I mean, you can't ever open the bars on the inside of the window? You know, a storm came in that night you know, into Manhattan. And it wasn't the storm that I had really packed for. You know, I had packed for a cold weather storm in Manhattan. And I uh, had a great jacket for that. But it wasn't that. It was a, it was a temperate rain that came into Manhattan that night. And I woke up that morning, and there was the sound of the rain and the heat from the radiator right in this little New York City apartment. And, and we, had a, we had breakfast that morning. And there was, it was this New York City apartment kitchen, right? There was New York City black tiles and New York City white tiles on the floor of the kitchen. And there was quirky little salt and pepper shakers on the, on the table. And, uh, and there was you know, just a, a measure of scale. It was just perfectly New York City apartment. It was so great. And, and we had a nice little scene there. And, and uh, then we, we decided it was time to go out. And, and I, I broke the news to her. I said, you know, I, I didn't really bring a, a waterproof jacket. She said, hey, that's okay. No problem. No problem. My brother was just here, and he left his jacket, and you can wear that rain jacket. And I said, no. Okay. You know, and uh, so she went to her, we went over to her little coat closet in this little apartment, and she went into the closet as my girlfriend. And she emerged from the closet as something else entirely. She was holding. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, she was holding the largest purple garment I had ever seen in my life. It was so purple. I looked on each side of it. I mean, there was nothing but purple to be seen around this thing. It was so purple. And I looked at her. And let's let's. I'd like to tell you that I I looked at her and I said, great. That's a great coat. Give me that thing. Let me put that thing on. Let's go. Let's do it. But that is not how this journey began. I would be doing something other than telling you the truth if I told you that. What I said was, quite simply, no. Oh. And I know my face looked like this. Because I saw her face. And her face looked like somebody who was looking at somebody with a face like this. <laughs> And I thought, uh, you know, I, I, I never felt more conspicuous in my life, right? I mean, I'm 6'3". So the first step, the first step here is she looks at me, she says, put it on. I said, all right, I'll put it on. And she went back to the closet and she retrieved her little black raincoat and uh and we were out on the streets and the first step the first stop really was to meet her friends from the social work school right these were amazing people these were like a balanced people that were um you know interesting and and vibrant um and i met them and there were there was uh one of her friends was named susie and there was brian and um it was karen and and they said uh What's your name? You know, I said, I'm Barney. <laughs> How are you? Look at us, standing outside with our eyes open wide. <laughs> I was miserable. I told him my name, I'm sure I told him my name, but I felt horrible out there. I felt so conspicuous, of course, but we made it through, we made it through the restaurant experience, and the rest of the day was spent touring New York City the way you would your boyfriend came to New York City, and you've been there for a while. And I can tell you that in 1990, the sidewalks of New York were amazing. I mean, the expansion joints in the sidewalks in New York City in 1990 were amazing. And the transitions from the sidewalk to the asphalt, those were, those were craftsmen. And I, uh, I can tell you that people's respect for their feet was pretty high in 1990. Because, I mean, there was mid-calf and short and, I mean, different fabrics and different leathers and different styles and different heels. You know, it was, they were beautiful. But that's, I could go on and on, you see, because that's all I can tell you about. I never looked up. I never looked up. Even when she said, this is the Empire State Building, I didn't look up. I looked at the foundation 
And I can tell you that that is an impressive, impressive piece of construction. <laughs> At that point, I could feel it that she started to get angry. And she had had about enough. And I was humiliated. And I was embarrassed. And I don't even want to go even speculate on the rate of rotation of Bomo placement in her grave as this was happening, as I was looking at the foundation of the, of the, you know, the greatest building that New York had to offer in the minds of many. So, I guess it's important to say that quickly I was back on that airplane and I was back in Memphis and I was in my dorm room and I was staring at that phone in my dorm room waiting on the call that had to come. This call had to come. I had earned this call. There was nothing I had done that would demand anything other than this call. But the first day passed, and the second day passed, and the call didn't come. And it turns out that even if you can carry off a purple slicker in Manhattan, the journey is not over. A year later, we, she and me, were living in Atlanta. And a year after that, we were married. And we both got about our task. Melissa was working as a social worker in a therapeutic foster care in Atlanta. And I was working as a scientist in, at the CDC in Atlanta. And I started to think about going to grad school. And one night at dinner, I broke it to Melissa. I said, um, Spot has opened up a program in Manhattan. A good microbiology program, and I and I would I would love to go. And she looked at me across the table, and I'm sure she saw me somewhat in violet, um, and said, "Okay." So why did I go back? Why did I want to go back? Why would I want to go back to this place? I you know I had spent a lot of time already by that age um, doing doing science with different people and lots of different people from all over the world and. Um, even the CDC was, you know, close to Tucker, but it was a great place to, to meet people from all over and hear their ideas. And no matter what, people are people, you know, like they have ideas and then they have that part of them that makes them themselves. And that's a very exciting thing to engage with. And that's the way I came to see the world. I saw it as people and their ideas. And their ideas were sort of like those cartoon balloon things over their, over their heads. The ideas sort of existed even when they left the room. We would work on ideas together. And I saw, I saw Manhattan as a place full of ideas that I wanted and people that I wanted to meet. And that's why I wanted to go back. Because I knew that from an efficiency standpoint, right, that was the place where I was going to figure out what I could do and what I couldn't do faster than anywhere else. There was lots of other places I could have gone that were really, really interesting. But that's what I wanted. Never mind the fact that if a place whoops you the way that New York will be the first time I went there, you kind of want to know if you can do it, right? Maybe you've got enough gumption. Maybe you've got a great girlfriend who became a great wife who's going to be your ace in the hole every time you get into a situation where you find yourself on the floorboards and you can't figure out how to get your bottom back up on the seat. So we went back. We went back in, and this time it was much, much better. We, we stayed there for six years, and we had our first two children there. We had Eli and Avery, the olders, as we call them, to the youngers, Sella and Libby Dee. And we learned a lot about ourselves, each, each of us learned a lot about ourselves, of course, and about each other. And we carried the momentum and this, this rule about pushing, pushing into what has now been 30 years. And yes, it was a tough beginning, right? But so far, so good when it comes to the outcome. Um, I want to say that overall, it's important that you do make eye contact. It's important that you see the things and the people around you. It's important that you look up. It's important that you see the beauty of the things around you. As for your outerwear, I'm going to leave that to you. So thank you very much and my best to all of you.